Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate you to the next level in your life. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. When you read in Luke chapter 5, Jesus begins to share this awesome fishing story that he has with Peter. And you know what? God wants every single one of you to have a fishing story journey in this life. Every single one of us. I can tell you story after story after story that Tim and I have in fishing. Tim came to me, he said, Mauricio, follow me and I'm going to make you a fisherman. And I followed him and you know what, guess what? I became an awesome, pretty awesome, I think I'm pretty decent as a fishing fisherman. And, uh, and I get out there and I love the game. Well, guess what? Jesus has this encounter with this amazing person that we know of today named Peter. And I want you to go to Luke chapter 5 quickly. Go to Luke chapter 5. If you are a note taker, open our Elevate Church app because I have feelings for you today. And you'll super enjoy all the points I have. But let me just tell you about a fishing story that Jesus has with Peter. And it begins to just kind of give us a different perspective. Listen, you're all creative and you all have an amazing imagination. For example, close your eyes for a second for me, please. Would you be so kind to do that for me? Just close your eyes. Just inhale and exhale. Okay, now listen to me. Keep your eyes closed. I'm going to say a word. Now listen. Apple. Okay, stop. Look at me now. How many saw red apple? Lift your hand if you saw red apple. Red apple. How many saw green apple? Okay, you're the smart ones. The red apple, I'm just kidding. Okay, the reason I have you do that is because, listen, I want you to, I want you to listen to this story with imagination, okay? Please, just picture the whole thing. Jesus shows up on the shore. There are fishermen that are right there working their butts off just to catch some fish. And then Jesus creates the most craziest fishing story that has ever been recorded in the Bible. Watch this. Look at this. Are you ready? It says, one day Jesus was standing by the sea of Galilee. The people crowded around him, listened and listened to the word of God. Can you picture right now Jesus and a crowd of people? How many can picture that right now? Just a crowd, just like, man, he's like this pop star and everyone's around him, right? And so he's crowded by all kinds of people. Everyone's like, you know, throwing out chants, Jesus, Jesus. And it says in verse 2, and then Jesus saw two boats at the edge of the water. And they had been left there by what? By fishermen. They had been left there by, but listen, but it wasn't just any kind of fishermen. I mean, you know, what, what Tim and I do, we, we go fishing for fun with a rod, maybe two with a second stamp rod. But what these guys did, no, they were like, this was like legit. These guys, they have a company. They, 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 have, they have nets where they throw out nets and they bring in like fish, fish. You know what I'm saying? They bring it in to sell. They bring it in, bring it in to make a living we go to do it for fun. They do it for a living. And so Jesus sees their boats and, and check this out. And so it says he sees the boat on the edge of the water and they had been left there by two fishermen. And, and it says and, and who, were, who were washing their nets. Everybody say uh, career. Everybody say business. Say work. Okay, so Jesus, he sees their work. He sees their business just doing nothing. So he says, what the heck, I'm going to go get into this thing. And so look what he does. So he got into the boat. He's straight. You know that Jesus wants to get all up in your business? He does. He wants to be inside your business. Like in your business. Now, he's not drama like, the, like some people in your life. You know what? He actually heals you from drama and trauma. Okay, so Jesus, he sees these two boats and he looks at them. He says, okay, they're not doing anything. I might as well just go in it. He gets in the boat, okay. And then he tells Peter, Simon, he says, hey, listen, uh, um, can, can you uh, uh, go out a little way from shore, please? Can you push me out a little bit? And then he pushed him out. And then he sat down in the boat and he started teaching the people. So Jesus is on this boat and, and now he's been pushed out by Peter. Peter's probably like, what the heck, who is this guy? This guy just showed up and gets all up on my business, and then now he wants to use my business, and now he's preaching his business, and now, and so he's talking his business. He's preaching the word. People, he's probably watching like, 
man, people are really listening to this guy. You know, wow, people are getting healed by this guy. Wow, he's not even touching these people. And, and people are getting touched by God. People are crying. People are experiencing Jesus in an awesome way. So guess what happens next? So it says, and when he finished speaking, he turned to Simon and he said to, uh, to Simon, he says, hey, uh, why don't you go out in the water now? Go on to the deep water. Everybody say deep water. So check this out. He goes to Peter and he says, just, just go a little bit deeper, man. You know, it's funny how sometimes we think we know it all or people think they know it all. But God knows a little bit more than we do. You know, when we went on Friday, <laughs> uh, I'm going to tell on this, Pastor Tim. So we're like in the boat shop. And we're talking to the guy, and the guy's like, yeah, man, you know, the fish X, Y, Z, and, you know, they're only about, like, this much deep, and da, da, da. And so anyways, and then Pastor Steve's like, yeah, we're going to do the opposite of that. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, we're going to do the opposite of that. And so we're, like, fishing out there, and, and we're trolling with lead core, which is, you know, like, heavier lying, and, and just kind of brings the weight down. And, and we go, that's when you go, like, 40, 50, 60, 70 feet. And um, Pastor Tim wanted to go about 10, 20 feet or something like that. And I'm like, you know what, I'm going to go 40. And so I drop my line, and I go 40 feet. And you know what? It's at 40 feet that we hit all three fish. You know what I'm saying? What, what does that mean? Sometimes we think that we have enough knowledge, enough information to think we got it. But then, but then when life's not working, let me tell you something. God knows how to work things that are broken. And then he says to, to Peter, the professional fisherman, the man who does this for a living. And, and Jesus is telling him, hey, listen, hey, Peter, why don't you go just out a little bit deeper? Do you know that God wants you and I to just go a little bit deeper with our relationship with him? God wants us to go a little bit deeper with our, our prayer time, our word time with him. God wants us to go a little bit deeper with really connecting with what God wants to do, not only in your life, but through your life. It's not just about what he wants to do in you, but it's what he wants to do through your life. And so he tells Peter, he gives him a challenge. So he shows up and he challenges Peter. Listen, Peter's probably thinking, wait a minute, this guy, I know this guy, Jesus. Okay, he's a great preacher, obviously, people are following him. But I know he's a carpenter. And I have a carpenter telling me, a professional fisherman, to go out a little bit deeper. And look what he says. And Simon answered, <laughs> master. Everybody say master. master. Don't forget that word, Master. He says, Master, we've worked hard, man. We've been doing this all night. Have you ever complained like that? Like, man, I've been trying this forever. This doesn't work. We've been doing this, this, this thing called fishing, like, for years, man. And, and can you imagine, he probably was having a moment where, you know, their company was stuck. Have you ever been stuck in your workplace? You're stuck in your creativity. You're just stuck. You're stuck and you're not moving. And so Peter's like, man, we're just, man, we've, we've done this. We've already worked hard. We know how to do this. It's just, it's just not working. And, and look, and he says, and we haven't caught anything. I love this. But, so he had his little drama moment, right? But because I saw what you just did. But because I saw how you, how you touched these people. But because I, I see that person that was sick and now I remember that crippled and they're no longer crippled. I remember that person who was in debt and they're no longer in debt. He says, but because you say so. I love that. Is there people in your life, in your family, in your workplace, do you have friends that look at you the way Peter looked at Jesus and when you come and you speak to them a word of encouragement, and though nothing's working, they'll do whatever it is you're asking because it's you asking for it. Like, they'll, they'll, they'll honor you just because you said so. Because you said to do it, then I'm going to do it. I mean, do you have that kind of influence? Do you have that kind of impact in the lives of people where you can actually be seen by people that actually have a respect and they have this sense of like honor and they just want to, they just don't want to fail you. They just see what's in your life and they're just like, I want what you have. And so I know this is not working for me, Ari, but because you said so, look, I will let down the nets. Because you said so, I'm willing to try this because you said so. 
And so look what he says. And when they had done this, man, they caught a large number of fish. And there were so many that their nets began to break. So check this out. All of a sudden, man, how many, how many think here that, that Peter's probably thinking like, oh, dang, we need to hire this guy. Oh, we need, to, we need to give him partnership in this business here. You know, we can start like Peter Fish and Company, you know, Peter Fish Marketplace. I don't know, but we can, I mean, you would think that, that after having a struggle, when you experience something, you just want to go hang out with this person, right? Just like, man, can you join the club here? And so look, and so they began to break, so they, they motioned to their who? So obviously it's a big business, right? So they got all their partners, hey, y'all. We're blowing it up. Come over here. And so they, they motioned to all their partners in other boat to come and help them. And they came and they filled both boats so full that they began to what? Listen, when you get God full in your life, man, let me tell you something. Your life begins to sink with all kinds of blessings. It really does. For 20 years I've been following Jesus. And I'm not going to tell you that it's been perfect, but I have seen the goodness of God for 20 years. He's been so good that I'm still walking with him 20 years later. Because when he gets in your business, let me tell you something, he fills you. He fulfills you, not just fills you, he fulfills your life. You're no longer trying to find something, significance in anyone. You're no longer trying to find significance in a career. When Jesus and you connect, let me tell you something, it's cosmic. Something crazy, just like, like, I can't even explain it. I try to explain Jesus to people sometimes like, man, I'm like trying to, I, I can't, he's amazing. Oh, my God. Get over here. Let me just pray for you. And, you know, it's just like. It's amazing. And so when Simon Peter saw this, so he sees, he sees when people see you, they see your life and they're like, man, there's something different about you. He saw something that was incredible, that was amazing. It said that Peter fell at Jesus' knees and he says to Peter, go away from me. Hey, listen, I'm not good enough. I see that you just came to help me. I see that you were good to me, but I don't deserve it because you know what? You don't know the kind of man I am. You don't know the kind of woman I am. You don't know where I've been. But Jesus, with all of his love and grace and mercy, he didn't care about what he did last night. He didn't care about what he did last month. All Jesus cared about was one thing, and that one thing was him. And he says to him, Go away from me, Lord. I am a what? It's interesting because when I meet with people, when I talk to people that are far away from God, that don't have a relationship with God, I always hear the same thing. Well, you know what? I'm not ready for him because I got to get ready for him, then I'll come. But you know what? There's really no such thing as being ready. You know what? No one's promised tomorrow, so no one's ever, no one can ever say, I'm going to prepare to die on this year. No one. Life happens, guys. It just, boom, it happens. You can't prepare. You know what? For people that want to have kids, they always say, yeah, I'm going to just kind of get some things and, you know, I'll do. Listen, I'm like, here's the deal. Here's what I tell people. Dude, there's no such thing as a ready time to have babies. There isn't. You can try all you want. And guess what? When you finally save that money, something's going to break down. You're going to have to pay for that something. And then what? You're going to wait another 10 years? There's no such thing. You have to be ready in season and out of season, right? And so he says, hey, listen, I'm just no good, but look at this. And so he, had, he and everyone with him were amazed at the number of fish they had caught. So were James and John, the sons of Zebedee. Zebedee, I always get tripped out on that name. Like, dang, what if my name was Zebedee? <laughs> You'd probably be bullied in school if your name was Zebedee, Right? Who worked with Simon, and then Jesus said to Simon, hey, listen, Simon, don't be afraid, man. Don't freak out. Relax. It's so, what if we just treated people that are so sinful just like, hey, it's all right, man. Like what, like, what if we stop acting weird? Like, we think people are weird in their sin. No, you're weird when you think they're weird. Like, what if we just, like, it's okay, bro, it's all right. Now, if you're acting like them, that's a different story. That's different now. Then you're cray-cray. 
they're probably more sound than you because you know the truth and they don't and you're cray cray. So it's different, right? But, but, but Jesus like, hey, listen, don't, don't be, I'm not here to judge you, Peter. I'm not here to criticize you. Listen, I, I know that you don't follow me. I know that you don't, you've never sat under my teachings. I, 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 I don't, don't freak out. And he says, um, from now on, everybody say, from now on. You see, when you have this amazing cosmic ah, explosion with God, you will have a moment from now on, from now on, you will fish for what? And look at the next verse. So they pulled their boats in on the shore, and they what? They did what? They, they, they did what? They left what? Everything. They left everything, and they did what? They followed. Now, this is not a sermon to tell you to leave everything. Here, here Listen, the context of Luke chapter 5 basically implies that if you are someone who claims to be a Christian, what's a Christian? A Christ follower. Okay. It just implies that if you're a Christian who's following Christ, then you're fishing. So the question is this. If you're not fishing, then you're probably not following Christ. Because they left everything. See, knowledge is great, but knowledge doesn't change people. People change people. I've had people share a lot of knowledge with me, B.C., before Christ, that didn't change my life. But the person who came and prayed for my daughter who was dying, that changed my life. That made me a believer. Information is great. But the only one who can bring transformation is the Holy Spirit who's working in you and through you. And he brings transformation. He brings the word to life. And so that's what God wants to do through you and I. And so just, just think, what Jesus is saying, hey, listen, if you're going to follow me, we're going fishing. We're going to go fishing. Because he says, follow me and I'm going to make you a fisher of people. I'm going to teach you how to fish. When Pastor Tim said, follow me and I will make you a fisherman. Let me tell you something. He taught me how to fish. He literally discipled me, mentored me. You know what I'm saying? Coached me in how to fish. And that's what Jesus is saying. Hey, listen, when you spend time with me, when you connect with me, when you follow me wholeheartedly, that's what it means by leaving everything. Like you're willing to leave the old lifestyle so that you can follow the new life he wants to give you. That's leaving everything. It's not leaving your career. It's leaving your ideas, your ideology, your theology that you've created. And he says, now follow me and you watch what I'm going to make out of you. You hang with me and you'll see what you're going to become. Amen. Because who you hang with is what you're becoming right now. Right. And so God wants to put this belief system in you because once you have his belief system, right, which is already awesome, full of grace and mercy and, and peace and joy. Once you have his belief system, then you begin to think like him. And then once you start thinking like him, you start feeling like him. And once you start feeling like him, you start behaving like him. Oh, I know that's good. Amen. Oh, yeah, because it's good to follow him. It's good to follow Jesus. Follow me, and I'll make you a fisher of men. He'll change your life. You'll never say, that's not my personality. You'll never use that excuse again. It, that doesn't make sense. Your personality, you're right. It's not your personality. So let's go ahead and give you the, the true identity that Christ has in you, and that's him. You and I are the closest thing to Jesus that any of your coworkers are going to see. The closest thing to Jesus. Jesus is not going to knock on your office doors. Jesus is not going to walk into Staples. He's not going to walk into Universal. He's not going to walk into, you know, what the doctor's office. He's not going to walk into, into shopping malls. He's not going to walk into, into, you know, what a, a, a big business buildings. You know what? Every single day you are the one who walks into that place and you bring Jesus with you. Amen? Amen? I'm telling you, you bring Jesus. I'm just waiting for us to start a, you know, business group Bible club. 
they're coming. Yeah, God's like, yeah, I started with you, bro. You know, sis, you, you started. You get something going, right? Let's, 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 stop, let's stop being secret service Christians. You remember those, right, that I've talked about in the past, right? It's kind of like, you know, so you see someone with their Bible like open like that during lunch. You're like, oh, my God, you're a Christian. Dude, I'm a Christian too. You are? And then you're just both like very quiet about it. Like, oh, my God. And the reason you're so quiet about it is because your, your normal character is one that is rude, gossip, slander, and God forbid that someone knew you were a Christian. Yeah, because now it's like, I can't, I can't show I'm a Christian. Oh, my God. Yes, thank you. Please, don't jack it up for the rest of us. Amen? Okay, can we keep going, please? Let's hurry up. Where does the time go, huh? Okay, so, so Jesus, he comes to, to, to Peter, and, and he, he does what? He challenges him. He challenges him, and he challenges him to do three things that he did for him. Are you ready? Point number one. When, when, when Jesus came and said, follow me and I'm going to make you a fisherman, he's basically saying, hey, I'm going to teach you. I'm going to make you to be someone that's so awesome in how you represent me. Number one, this is how he teaches us. Number one, it's all about presentation. Everybody say presentation. So these are the three must-haves to fish. Presentation. It's all about presentation, guys. It's all about presentation. That's one thing that we know as fishermen, man, it's all about having, woo, the presentation. And it can't just be any presentation. It's got to be the right presentation, mm, right? I want to catch something. It better be like good. Like, man, if I want to go catch that big old 20-pound, you know, largemouth, I better be enticing to Mr. 20-pound, Right? You show them that little thing right there, he's going to be like, yeah, whatever. He can give you the time of the day. If you bring them this big old little trout here, like, mmm, that looks good. Presentation. There's something about you and I presenting the gospel of Jesus Christ. So check this out. This is the way it works, okay? The hook, everybody say the hook. The hook is the gospel. The hook is the gospel, guys. You know why the, the hook is the gospel? The hook, your hook, you know, the little hook that you need for your bait? Okay, the hook is the gospel. Why is it the hook? Because the gospel is made up, God's, it's, it's made up of, of, of Jesus, uh, his, his, his life, his death, and his resurrection. You have to have the hook, how goofy would you look like what I just did if I went fishing every day at the, at the lake cast stake and I'm just casting, you know, just this. And I'm just like this every day. There's no hook. I'm not going to, am I going to catch anything? No, but you don't, you, don't just, you don't just need a hook. You also need bait. Everybody say bait. So the hook is the gospel and the bait. Let's make some drawings here. That's the hook. And the bait is, guess what? Jesus, you know it. Some of you are fishermen. And then we just make a beautiful fish. Okay? So the hook is what? The gospel. And the bait is what? So just think this way. Satan is also a fisher of men. You know how I know that? Well, <laughs> he also... Likes to go fishing. And he also likes hooks. And he also likes baits. He likes the bait of pride. Huh? He knows where to get you. Come on. We all deal with some sins and they don't all look alike here. He's got the hook of lust. Huh? The, huh? 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 And, and he's just like, he starts bringing it out. He brings out whatever color gets you. And he just starts working you. Yeah, yeah, offense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, yeah, ooh. Let's throw another little offense out there. Oh, oh, oh. Mm. And then you know what it does? He hooks you. You see, Satan is the caster of disaster of you and me. Oh, he knows how to cast it real good. Mm. And 
And then you start hearing that little zzzz, and, and you know what? He's like, oh, I got you. You're hooked. And you know what he does? He reels you in. So Satan is the caster of disaster of you and me. But guess what? Satan, he keeps you. He bounds you or binds you. And then he puts you on his wall of, of trophies and says, it's another one. But Jesus, ever say, but Jesus. Remember when Jesus, when Jesus connected with Peter, what did Peter call him? Master. Say it all out. One, two, three. Master. One, two, three. Master. Yeah, but Jesus is the master caster. Come on, somebody. And so he's like, all right, you think you got something saying? And so he's the master caster, boom. And then you know what he does? Jesus, he knows how to bring you in. But guess what? The difference between Satan who fishes for men and Jesus Christ who fishes for you and I is that when Jesus catches you, when Jesus draws you in with his love, not lust, with his, with his, with his peace, not stress, right, with his joy, not sorrow, he brings you in. But you know what he does? Here's the difference between Satan and Jesus. Jesus brings you in, heals you up, cleans you up, and releases you. Because whom the sun sets free is what? Free indeed. So Satan keeps you, Jesus releases you. And he says, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Jesus wants you and I to go out and spread the love. How? A box? No. This is the church. The church is God's tackle box. The church is God's fishing tackle box. And God, you know what he does? <laughs> he knows that in this box is a diverse group of people. He knows that in this box called the church is a diverse group of ethnicities. He knows that in this church, in this box, there is a group of diverse giftings and talents and experiences of life and journeys and stories that he needs to go ahead and put on his line and cast you out and send you out so that when you go into whatever environment, which whether it's your workplace, whether it's your school, whether it's your community, whether it's a restaurant, he has someone right there that all of a sudden can begin to say, hey, how you doing? Very nice to meet you. There's something different about you. Presentation. All of a sudden, come on, what if you as an employee were someone that actually walked in your workplace with a smile instead of always with a frown? What if you walked in the workplace having some kindness rather than being rude? Presentation. It's all about the presentation. How do you present your Lord and Savior? How do you present your life? How do you present yourself when you're in whatever community God has placed to it? Because God is looking for the right bait, the right person that can reach the right people. Right now, if you're in a workplace that you just are sick and tired of and you're trying to look for a different job and you're just like, dang, I can't find another job. I'm going to be stuck here forever. No, don't look at it that way. I want you to look at it with a different set of lenses. Maybe, just maybe. Most likely, there is probably an assignment, there's a person, there's someone there that God has placed in your track, in your journey, for your story that you are to reach, and you have not finished that assignment. And when you reach that person, when you love on that person, when you express your love to them the way Jesus expressed his love to you, then guess what? Mission accomplished. Now you watch and see how that job that you've been looking for is going to open up and the blessings of God are going to overtake you. Because God says, you let me get in, you get in my business, I get in your business. And I'll bless it. Amen. That's probably a word for somebody here. You don't like your job. Get a different perspective. There's an assignment there. It will change everything. Are you with me? Number two, did I give you number two? Attraction. It's all about the attraction too, right? Jesus, man, he was very attractive. Man, he said, hey, go, go deeper. No, man, just go deeper. Boom. What happens? Two 
boatloads of fish. That's pretty attractive. Like, man, ooh, this guy's awesome. I mean, what about us? What attracts people to us? Because guess what? They're not going to be meet Jesus. What attracts? What makes you attract? Do you know that kind people is very attractive? Right? Loving people is very attractive. You know what I'm saying? There's something about, I, I know for us guys that fish, now I know Pastor Tim's a little bit more reserved. I'm a little bit more outspoken. He's more mature than me. I'm not. Um, but when I go fishing, I, I, every time, and Pastor Tim, you know this, we, anytime you, you, you ride by another boat, you're like, hey, what? How many? <laughs> Two. What'd you use? And we just like sharing for me. And you know, and when they start saying like five, ooh, that's attractive. Like, man, where have you been all my life? Man, what are you using, bro? We, we, it's attractive. I want what you have. Like, dang, bro, they got, they got shad, bro. We got worms. You know, shad's like a little fish. And it's like, man, we, don't got, we got the wrong bait. Dang. They're busting them out. We're right there working hard with our little worm and a little crankbait. And, you know, they got live stuff out there. And it's like, ooh. But that's attractive. They did it right. There's something about them. That I want. Attraction. Number, number three, reaction. See, when you have presentation, when you have attraction, then you have a reaction. What do I mean by that? You know what? When you have a reaction or a decision that someone sits, for example, while we did our ride for Christ yesterday, which now I'm hooked to motorcycle riding. I'm hooked, man. That's it. Pastor Tim, I don't know if we're going to be fishing any longer anymore. I'm, like, hooked on riding. I rode a motorcycle to church today. I'm like, man, I ain't taking the car. I'm going on a motorcycle. <laughs> I'm hooked. That's it. It's over. And so we were out yesterday for Ride for Christ. And, and of course, we prayed, God, lead, lead, lead someone in our path so that we can reach, blah, blah, blah. You know how the prayers go, right? Like, we're all spiritual and everything. And, and so we, we go out there and, and uh, you know, uh, and nothing. It's like, okay, I'm like, man, what's missing? And, and so we walk into this Starbucks, and, you know, we walk in looking all gangster with our, you know, all the biker guys. And, you know, there's something about being a biker. You all of a sudden think you're like 10 feet tall. So we're all, we're all just like, you know, just walking in Starbucks looking all cool. But nothing was happening. But, you know, La Carlos, who's our, our, our motorcycle club leader, you know, he starts talking to this guy. Well, heck, man, I want, I want, that's attractive, man. La Carlos looking, you know, really good. I'm like, let's go. And so I was talking to this guy, and, and I noticed that the guy had this, like, really weird, funky-looking guitar, like, just like this little piece of wood with strings. And, but it was, like, amazing. And, uh, and so Carlos is talking to him, and then I start talking. I'm like, hey, I'm like, man, you know how to play that thing? He's like, yeah, I've been playing for a bazillion years. I'm like, you playing a band? Yeah, I'm playing a band. I'm like, wow, that's pretty awesome. Can you play that for me right now? He's like, sure. And he's, just, you know, he's, like, getting all into it. And, and I'm like, wow. And he was playing good. Like, real good. Like, I'm thinking, dang, how do I get him on our worship team? This guy's awesome. <laughs> Older guy, right? So he's like, mm, and I'm like, wow. And then I notice he has this Navy hat. And I'm like, hey, dude, you know how to play. That's amazing. That's, you're good. You're, like, good. Because I, I know music. And that's good. And, and I'm like, hey, uh, did you serve our country? He's like, yeah. I'm like, thank you so much for serving our country. Seriously, man. Thank you so much. And he stopped. And there was something about me giving him the time of day that he felt so impressed and so connected that he reacted and said, what about you? What are you doing today? I said, I'm riding motorcycles. We have, we're from a church. We're riding. He's like, oh, you need God. I said, oh, yeah, we need God, man. And by the way, God is, was with us yesterday because yesterday we're riding our motorcycles. And, you know, when you're riding, we're just, you know, we're, we're, when we ride motorcycles, we're half safe, not all safe because we like to speed a little bit. But, but we're riding and God protected us because uh, this car sped up in front of us while we were taking the lead, but this car just took off and went and whatever. But a mattress went flying out of a truck, and the car crashed into the mattress, and the car was like shh, losing control. But because we prayed, God, we sent angels to go before us. You know what? And sure enough, if that mattress would have flown out while all of us were riding, it would have probably taken all of us out. But listen to me. When God sends you, he protects you. When you're about his business, you're protected as well. You have heavenly insurance that got your back, amen? And so there's something about reaction. And this guy was so touched. And he said, man, unique. I said, well, dude, can I pray for you? He's like, no. He's like, oh, I'm good. Thank you. He's like, I have God in my life. I'm like, that's awesome. And so there's something about just being real with people. 
But Carlos said to me uh, yesterday as we were at, you know, we were being very, very spiritual. We had a spiritual moment at, uh, um, at In-N-Out Burger. And, uh, <laughs> and he looked at me. It was very spiritual. Like, you know, double the animal fries. It was just, and he, and he said to me, he's like, he's like, Pastor, I'm like, yeah, he's like, he's like, this is real. I'm like, the burger? He's like, no, man, the ride. I'm like, oh. No, but what he was saying is like, this is real. This is, this is how we can reach people. He's like, this makes sense. People will want to know our Jesus because the presentation is so good. It's so raw. Like, you can love Jesus and ride motorcycles. You can love Jesus and, and, and fish. You know what? Yesterday, Kurt and Holly, which they're going to be doing a, a, a group thing with married people, you can love Jesus and go shoot guns at a shooting range. Holly, her little frail self with a big old gun yesterday, I'm like, what the? I'm like, man, we got crazy people in our church, man. You know, it's like, but listen, but that's cool. Like, you know, here's Holly teaching on marriages, and she's out there shooting guns, you know. It's like, like you know, but thank God that it's, it's an actual target, not your, you know, your spouse. So, so Jesus is real, and he wants you to be hooked on him. So let me give you seven hooks. Can I give you seven hooks and let's go home? Okay, let's give you this. Number one, ask God to give you an evangelistic burden for others. This is what we're going to do, guys. I'm going to challenge you as Jesus challenged Peter and the disciples. I want you to pray, God, give me a heart that sees people the way you see them. Like when I see rude people, help me to see the potential in them. When I see funky people, God, help me to see an opportunity. Number two, live a consistent Christian life. Jesus said this, you are the light of the world and let your light so shine before men. Your light needs to shine before men, guys. It must shine before men. It has to shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. And that's found in Matthew 5, 14 through 16. God wants you to shine for him. It's for him, not for you. And you know what, how you shine? Is you be honest in a dishonest world. Number three, build bridges to others. Build bridges to others. You know how you do that? Is that you have to be able to build relationships with the people you work with. Start learning to care just a little bit more about the people you work with rather than just treating them like they're just some other person that you're working with at the same place. No, you know what? You build that relationship for the purpose of going fishing. Number four, learn the gospel because the gospel is the hook. If you don't have a hook, you're not going fishing. You must learn the gospel. I put some scriptures up there. Romans 3.23, this is called the Roman road. Romans 3.23, 6.23, 5.8, 10.9, 13.1 uh, John 5, 1 and 13. Learn the Roman road. It's very simple. Let's put a couple of those Roman scriptures. Look at this. Put a few up already. Just put a few up so I can go through them real quick. Look at this. Romans 3.23, listen, when you have a hook, this is how you think. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. In other words, you're already the person that says, hey, listen, we all messed up. When people say, I'm not, I'm not ready. No, dude, trust me, you are ready. We're all messed up, but there's someone who's greater than our mess up. And his name is Jesus. Look at Romans 6, 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God. Everybody say gift. When you give salvation, you're giving gifts away. When you bring healing, you're giving a gift away. When you bring encouragement, you're bringing a gift from God. It's not your gift. It's his gift for people. You're a gift as well. Do you know that you're a gift? Every single one of you, you're a gift from God. And so he says, a gift of God and it's eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let's put some two more. Let's do two more. Romans 5 8. But God demonstrates. Everybody say demonstrates. Presentation. His own love for us in this. That while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. What if we were the type of Christians that when we see people screw up, that we still know how to love them in their mess up. Like, man, yeah, you suck. You suck. But you know what? But I remember when I sucked. When I was a low life, when I was no good. And I'm going to show you the grace that God showed me. I love you, man. 
Let's get it together. Romans 10, 9 says, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, guess what? You will be saved. That's all you got to do. Look at this one, next one. Romans 10, 13, this is my favorite. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be what? Why do we complicate it? Pastor, can I get your prayer? You know, when you do like the end of the service and you invite people with your prayer of salvation, because I need a flashcard. No, you don't. How about just if someone is in need, if someone is just broken, how about just tell your fish story? And, and, and at the end of it, you know how you do it? You just say, hey, listen, you want to pray with me? Yeah, okay, listen, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved, so why don't we do this? Why don't we just call on Jesus right now? How do we do that? Well, how do you, how do you make a phone call? Well, I get on my phone and I call someone. Let's call God right now. Because he says that when we call on the name of what? He does what? He saves. Here's what you do. Just pray this with me. Just say, Jesus, save my life. Save me right now from my pain, my hurt. I receive you. Help me. You're saved. You know why? Because those who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. Call out to his name, Jesus. He saves. He saves. Okay, let's keep going. Number five. Number five. Watch for openings to share a word for Christ. You got to watch for openings. Watch for openings. God will set you up. Number six, if the right opportunity doesn't come naturally, create one. Huh? Oh, Lord, would you put them in my path? And nothing happens. Well, heck, if it don't happen, then make it happen. Just create one. We're going to turn this coffee shop into church. Number seven, leave the results with God. Listen, we're responsible for sharing our fishing story, okay? We're responsible to share the gospel, but only God can convert the soul. Only God can change them. Last thing I leave you with, okay? Listen, I'm going to challenge you all because here's the truth. You all work with people right now. Close your eyes, please, just for a moment, please. I want you to just imagine a person right now that you work with, someone that is a co-worker with you. It can be an employee or a boss, a supervisor, or maybe a friend, a close friend of yours, or, or, or someone in your community. Just, just think of someone that, that you know that doesn't have Christ in their life. Put them in your, in your, in your mind right now. And just see their face. Okay, now look at me. Look at me. What would you do if tomorrow morning you arrive to work or tomorrow you get a phone call, and God forbid, that the person you just thought about that doesn't have Christ died in a freak accident, maybe a heart attack, uh, something, something something horrible and they died on your watch and they never heard about Jesus Christ and yet you were there you were there how is that possible God says let's go fishing because if you're not fishing then you're probably not following you're probably just someone that has all kinds of knowledge but you have no power. But you, let's go fishing. I had my little, uh, I'm just dropping everything here, man. I'm just like, wow. I got hooks. I don't want to hook my goldfish, but these are my goldfish. Check this out. He says, go fishing. Shoo, I go fishing. You know, they're difficult. They run. And, and you know what? Ah, yeah. So you bring him out. And so, you know what? You see my fishy, right? He's like, he's dying. He's gasping for air. He, he's out of his element. Do you know that God created us in the perfect element to heal us and restore us? And look, I can save him and bring him back to life. I know that at the 8, 10, and 12 o'clock, I had people get all freaky, like, <gasps> <gasps> Pastor. I'm like, 
it was, it was, it was a trip. People got a little weird, just like, it's okay, I'm good, thank you so much. They got a little bit weird. You know, like, oh, you should have seen the, all day today. And I'm sure some of you are like, oh, my God, how dare he. I'm going to call the fish police right now. Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to report him. I'm going a, I'm to a tell. Oh, let me get a little video right now. Oh, look, pastor kills fish. No, look, he's alive, liar. No, listen, listen, listen to me, please. We have people in the church, in the body of Christ, that are more concerned of a fish out of water than a soul that's going to hell. Why don't you have that kind of reaction for your coworkers? <gasps> they don't have Christ. They don't have Jesus, and you're okay with that? But you're not okay with a fish out of water. People get all freaked out because a fish is out of water. Well, guess what? There are souls that are going to go to hell for eternity. While Satan is a caster of disaster, Jesus is a master caster, and he wins souls, and he changes lives. And then he says, if you follow me, then go fish. Amen. Bow your head, close your eyes, please. If you're here today and, and you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus, please listen to me. It's not about religion. Jesus didn't die on a cross and go through so much suffering so that we can have this religion. Jesus died so that he can be in relationship with you. He loved you so much that he was willing to sacrifice his life so that you can have eternal life. You see, all of us will expire someday, every single one of you, including me. But the question is this, is where will you spend the rest of your life because you know what this earth is short but your eternity is forever that means there's a hell and there's a heaven but God created a heaven for all his kids you see that fish it belongs in that water well guess what every single one of you you belong in heaven and the only way to heaven is through the son Jesus Jesus said I'm the only way the truth and the life in other words no one comes to the father except through Jesus Christ because he's the one that brings breath into your life if today's message impacted you in any way and you would like to help us spread the gospel to others by giving a financial gift, please text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed as yours was today.